In this video, we're going to continue styling Yelp Camp. We're going to add a nav bar to every single page, and that nav bar will be pretty empty for now, but eventually it will have buttons like log in and sign out, register, all of that functionality. But until then, we'll just put some placeholder text in there. And then we're also going to style the new campground form, because right now it's, it's in pretty rough shape. So let's start the server up and just take a look at what we have. So here's our landing page. Here's our view all campgrounds page, the campgrounds list. It's looking pretty okay. We want a nav bar up here. Same thing on add new campground. We're going to center the form and we're going to stack these two inputs on top of one another rather than having them be side by side. But we're gonna start with a nav bar and let's just work with it on the campgrounds template. So we'll go back here and open the campgrounds template. To get started, I'm going to open up the bootstrap docs and I'm going to go over to components and then nav bar. And I find myself on this section all the time because even though bootstrap makes it really easy to add a nav bar, you can still see it's quite a bit of markup. And ours won't be this long, definitely, uh, at least not to start when we don't have all the buttons and the drop downs. We're going to start nice and simple, but even then, it's still a lot of classes that we need to remember. So there's definitely no shame in pulling up the bootstrap docs. Just like anything else in this class, you shouldn't feel ashamed about looking things up, but in particular bootstrap sometimes can just be a mess of these classes and elements, and there's no way to do it without looking at the docs. Okay, so we'll go back and I'll make some room at the top of my campgrounds template. And we're gonna start by defining a nav, which again, just like the header, we could just do a div, but a nav is a little bit more meaningful, it's more semantic. So I'm gonna do a nav with a class, nav bar, and then nav bar dash default. There are different types and different colors where we can have an inverted nav bar, but we're just gonna go with the default one. And then inside, we're going to add a div with class equal to container fluid, and that will just make us some nice padding and some space in there. And then we're going to add in another div with class equal to navbar header. And then inside of the class equal to navbar header, we're going to add an anchor tag with class equal to navbar dash brand, like that. And then we can set the link to just be slash, and then we'll close that and add in Yelp camp, just like that. And let's see what we get with this simple markup. So we have our nav with a container inside with a nav bar header, and the nav bar header only has one item, which is the nav bar brand. Let's refresh. Okay, so we have the nav bar, and then we have our brand over here. And this is a link that when we click it, will take us back to the hideous landing page. Okay, so let's add in a few placeholders over here for login and sign up. They won't work or they won't do anything, but they'll at least look good. So let's do that now. Go over to our campgrounds.ejs template, then inside the navbar and the container, but not inside the navbar header, we're going to add in another div. And this div will have a class of collapse which we'll see what that does in just a moment, and then navbar dash collapse, just like that. And then inside, we're going to add a UL, and this UL will have a class of navbar dash nav, and then also navbar dash right, which will move it over to the right-hand side. And then inside of that, we're going to have three links for now, and each one will be an LI, and then inside that li, we'll have an anchor tag, and we'll give the first one login, and for now, the href will just be set to our root path because we don't have any login yet, and we'll do the same thing for register. Let's do sign up, and then also log out. Just like that. Okay, so let's see what this looks like before we talk about what the collapse does we refresh, and it does not look good. We missed one minor class, 
back here on the UL, it looks like we didn't add in nav. So we just added navbar nav and navbar right, but we didn't add in nav itself. So we'll save. Now we'll refresh. And we end up with our three links on the right side of the nav. And also, when I change the size here, notice that right here, right there, it collapsed. And eventually what we'll have is a little hamburger icon. It looks just like that, where you click in its menu. For now, we just hide them when we get to that size. Okay, so that's all we need to do for the navbar, except for the fact that it's only on this one page. So let's now add it to all of the pages. So let's copy it out or cut it out, and we're gonna move it to the header. So move to the header partial. I'll just open that using the command line, c9 view slash partials slash header dot ejs. And then just at the very top of the body, we'll add that in. Let's indent this properly. Okay, there we go. And we have our nav bar on the header so that any file that we include the header partial in will now have the nav bar. Let's start the server again. So it's still here. If we add a new campground, we also get that nav bar. And if we go to the home page, we also have the nav bar. Great, so now let's move on to making this form look a little bit better. So as I mentioned earlier, there are two big things I wanna to do to this form. The first one is to center it in the middle of the page. And the second one is to stack the form vertically rather than having the three inputs or the two inputs in the button aligned horizontally across the screen. We wanna take them and stack them one on top of another. Let's begin by opening up the correct file, which is the new.ejs. So I'll do c9 views slash new.ejs. And then here's our form that we have so far. Let's start easy and add in some of the bootstrap classes to the forms or to the inputs. And that's form dash control. And we want that on both inputs. And on the button, Let's add in a bootstrap class, btn, btn large, just like that. And we'll also do btn default. And let's see what that looks like. So node app.js, refresh. Okay, so we're getting the bootstrap controls here and the bootstrap button, although it's definitely huge and we don't want that. So to fix this, there's a few things we can do. The first is that we'll put everything inside of a container. So we want div class equals container. And I'll just move this to the bottom. There we go. And let's indent this properly. Save, very minor change, but we get some spacing now, but that's still a massive form. So the next thing that I'll do is use the grid system so we'll add in another div, and this one will have class equal to row, just like that. Let's take this and copy it into the row, so the entire form goes into a row now, and let's also indent this. Okay, save, refresh. Not a big difference yet, and what we're going to do is use CSS and actually write our own styles on top of Bootstrap to center this by giving it margin auto, all of this right here, on the left and right side. And we only want it to take up about 30% of this container that it's in. So we've done that before. We'll go back. And I'm going to break one of the rules that I told you early on. I said, do not do inline styles. And that's definitely a good idea to not do that. Um, but for now, until we get to a new version where we create our own style sheets, I am going to do it inline. So I'm going to make a new div that we put the form inside of, just like that. And then I'm going to give that div style, and I'm gonna start by saying width is 30%, and just leave it at that, and you'll see we get a smaller form. Now we wanna center that. So we'll go back here, say margin zero on the top and bottom, and auto on the left and right. Now we have the form centered. The next thing we'll do is make the button take up the entire width, which is still pretty long, but what we'll do is give it 
btn block, which is a built-in bootstrap way of making it a block element and it now takes up the entire line. Next, let's give some spacing between all of these elements. To do that, we'll use bootstrap's built-in form group class. So we need a div class equals form dash group and we're going to need that for each input. So every input goes inside one of those, just like that. And then I'll just duplicate this and we'll have another one right here. And this will go inside of that. And then we have one more for the button. So we have class equals form group three times. And we also need the closing div tags. There we go, there's one. And we need the other closing div tag here. Okay, so that form group just groups things together, but it also gives us a little bit of space. Now we have this button here. The next thing that we could focus on is centering the text. And to do that, all that we have to do is give it text align center. And again, I am going to do that in line. Not a good idea in the long term at least, but this is a great use for it just to do something quickly. So style, and we'll do text align center. Save. Now that's centered in the middle. The next thing we should do is change the color of this button. The white is not looking very good. Let's make it primary, button primary, which will make it blue. Save, refresh. Yes, that looks a lot better. Let's also move this link, the go back link, over to the middle as well. So we'll just copy this. And all we need to do is put it inside of this margin auto div. So that's this div here after the form, just like that and save. There we go. We have our go back. And the last thing that we should really do is add a little bit of padding or margin so that it's not right up against this H1. To do that, we'll just go back and we already have this div that we've selected. So rather than margin zero, we can just give it a margin of 20 pixels to start. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks a little better. Let's do something more like 50. And that might be a little bit too much. Definitely your own preference. Let's go back and do 25. All right, that's good enough for now. Uh, play with this as much as you'd like, and you can make this form the inputs wider if you like them or narrower, but you can see that it is responsive. It's going to stay in the middle and shrink down a little bit. Um, last thing, let's get rid of this trademark. We definitely don't need that anymore in the bottom of our footer. So we'll go to the footer file and I'll cheat and just do this for now. And we'll just get rid of that. Save. Now we have our form, doesn't look too bad. Can go back. We get the list of campsites. We have the nav bar. We can add one. We can also go back and view the landing page, which is not done yet. That one has probably the most work and it's going to be pretty different than the other pages. It will look a lot nicer and have a lot more custom styles. So that's why I'm saving it until later. And then we also have our nav bar here with our dummy buttons that don't do anything. All right, 